welcome to this, the 22nd and final episode of the fifth season of the Ubuntu UK podcast. Um, we are going to do a number of things in tonight's show, <laughs> apart from being attacked by cats. Um, we are going to discuss our predictions that we made for 2012 in our last episode of the last season to see what we got right, and we're going to make our predictions for 2013. And then it'll be time for our Christmas play. Hmm. We will, of course, cover the latest <laughs> news, a bit about Ubuntu, and we will have a preview, a forthcoming documentary about Tomorrow's Technology Today, with thanks to Robin Catling and Victoria Pritchard for keeping us entertained with Tomorrow's Technology Today throughout the season. And as if that wasn't enough, everybody, we also have some of your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages and abuse using the chat facility <laughs> on the website and in the IRC channel. I am Tony, and joining me for tonight's finale of this season are Laura... Hello. Mark. Hello. And Alan. Good evening. Good, good evening to you, Alan. Alan, would you like to tell us what you've been up to recently? Um, I switched off um, Adblock on all my machines. Uh, I, I read an article somewhere that said that people who use Adblock are evil. And so I thought I'd turn it mm. off and see and see if I could survive with um, Adblock switched off. I read a similar article and tried the same thing. And I lasted a while, but then I went to a, a page which had a video with sound, which was halfway down the page and started playing as soon as I went to the page. And so I had to go hunting for it and I got very angry. Was it, YouTube? Just... Was it YouTube? No, no, no. This was, this was a page about something completely different, which had an advert for Airwick, the right. air fresheners. And they've just spoilt it for everyone else. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So I've now got Adblock, but I've got the option to allow non-intrusive adverts on to give people a so, chance. So I, I, I think the most annoying adverts that I've now discovered exist are the pre-roll videos on YouTube. Mm. Oh yeah, they, they just annoy me so much. I didn't realise uh, that Adblock blocked those. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll see how long I go, and maybe if by the start of the next season, if we do one, uh, uh, I, I'm still using Adblock. <laughs> then um, I'll let you know. I, re I remember reading an article that said that people that don't give me £10 notes on a regular basis are evil. So I haven't might... read that article. Right. So, but he has uh... given me a £10 note tonight. Uh -huh. Oh, have you? Yeah. Really? What's that about? <laughs> Never, <laughs> mind. Never you okay. mind. All right, Laura, what have you been up to then? As in... Except you know. money from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a new ThinkPad for work. Oh. That's it, really. It I saw it for about 10 minutes before I had to put it in my cupboard and get on with work. work. Oh. Does it smell new? Yeah, and it's all shiny. So is this, is this a, a laptop for you or is it a laptop for work? For work? It's work's laptop for work. But you had other work to do at work, so you can... I had to it. use my old laptop to carry on doing oh. the work I was meant to be doing. You know what you should treasure uh, about this moment with your ThinkPad? Mm -hmm. Is treasure <laughs> the fact that you don't have dust in these little crevices at the edge of the keyboard. <laughs> Alan points to ThinkPad. Do. I have all these little dusty crevices on my laptop. And I hate it. I'll watch out for those dusty crevices then. <laughs> Ooh, uh. Right. There we go. Mark, moving swiftly along. I've been reading a book or oh. e-book. Congratulations. Physical, a book or e-book? No, Which is it? I, 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 it's, it's a story in the form of an e-book. It's a, it's a novel. It's the third in a trilogy by a guy called Stephen Sweeney, who um, I originally came across because he wrote a game called Blob Wars, which was an open source game, which you could get on Linux. It was reviewed in Linux format and a few other places. It's quite good. It's like a platform shooty thing where your character is a little, like a little yellow smiley face guy with guns. Um, and yeah, he's, he's now in his spare time, instead of writing open source games, he's an author um, and writes sci-fi oh, yeah. novels and they're pretty damn good. Yeah. So he, and he releases them all DRM free as well. So if you go to battle for the solar system.com, I think it is, you can buy them there. Awesome. That sounds quite cool. Yeah. Mm. I, I would recommend them to anyone who likes sci-fi, especially if you like sort of space opera, Star Trek, uh, Stargate type stuff. Right. Cool. What about you, Tony? What have you been up to? You, you might remember in the last episode, I told you about the Nexus 4 phone that I had just ordered. <laughs> no, I didn't. Have uh, you got it and been playing with it and you're going to tell us all about it? Yeah. Are you going to review it's, it? It's right here. Look yeah. at that. No. Oh, oh wow. Oh, it's a lot bigger than I thought. Well, uh, yes, indeed. That's my thought. It arrives tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah, it hasn't turned up yet. Two weeks. <laughs> 
Google have had something of a nightmare with um, shipping this thing. Uh, apparently, they didn't anticipate that people might want to buy a relatively inexpensive phone uh, in vast quantities just before Christmas. <laughs> Fancy that. Um, so there are lots of people who won't get theirs till after Christmas, but mine hopefully will arrive tomorrow, and uh, I shall enjoy playing Keep with it. Keep you busy, won't it? It will. Although I've just remembered that I don't actually have a SIM card of the appropriate size ah. to fit in it. You got a pair of scissors? Yeah, I've seen those videos on YouTube where you take a pair of scissors to your SIM card. My brother did that and it didn't work, I but did. <laughs> he did find a person who you can pay to do it for you and it works a lot better. Yeah, most remember. of those little phone shops you get in out here in the sticks yeah <laughs> can't move for those around here I, I cut mine down in my in my phone and yeah. uh yeah that's well, fine okay yeah. mm. i'll do it for you yeah right uh, okay there we go um so let's crack on with this show time last year sorry i breathed before i spoke this time last year uh, we made some predictions about uh open source and ubuntu yep in the year um and now we're going to find out just how right or wrong we were yeah i know we're on the wrong side (laughs) (laughs) so first up was oh mine um which we're rather optimistically suggested that projects that are going after mainstream market share will realise that they need to be more innovative with regards to the user experience to be competitive. Now, I actually think sort of in that things like Unity and that are trying to... Well, I guess it's a bit Mac-like. GIMP now has single window mode. Ah, yes, mm. they listen. But, yes. but that's, you said that they were going to stop trying to match closed source products and be better than them, whereas that is just, just trying to be more like Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah. So what are we saying to that? A yes or a no? No. I'd say. In general, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that seeing was that loud. coming. That was quite loud. Right, next up. Uh, Alan. Uh, mine. Uh, I said Canonical will have 700 employees. Does it? At the time, it was 492, and now it's um, just shy of 600. So, oh. no. Oh. Your no, noise. no points oh. for Alan. <laughs> uh, I also said a big name OEM will be shipping Ubuntu laptops, which will be easy to discover on their website and will provide direct support for them. I think you'll find Dell sell. Right, I'm, I'm going easy? to go. I'm going to go to dell.co.uk. No, because that's not there. <laughs> I'm going to go to somewhere. Oh no, sorry. This is this is the Dell UK official website. You said through their website. <laughs> I'm going to go to somewhere that doesn't sell this product and then complain that I can't find it. Okay. That seems fair. <laughs> Dell.com. To be fair, Alan was very region non-specific I in was. his prediction. So I think we have to give him that one. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Do you remember these? It's like the now? quiz. <laughs> Yes. yes. Mark. Hello. Um, right. I predicted that someone will write an open source H.264 plugin for Firefox and HTML5 video will standardize to that. Oh, that's. I, th- I think you're kind of there, aren't that's, you? Uh, well, yeah. I, the, I did say it would be nothing to do with Mozilla, which isn't quite what's happened. What's happened is Mozilla have supported the open source codex that mm. already exist. I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough I'll myself. Teach you to yeah. be specific. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> be more vague next time. <laughs> Yes. Um, I also said that Linux Mint will make a change to its desktop, which a vocal group of users will disagree with. I don't know if that's happened. I don't pay attention to the <laughs> Linux Mint community. Let, let's, let's say that happened. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I've got the wrong let's effect queued up then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. There we go. Right, and then there's me. And what did you say? Are you I queuing said, up your... Uh, uh, really? He could queue up any effect, couldn't Absolutely. he? And then just pretend. I said I predict that we're going to make some more predictions next Christmas. <sighs> which has proven correct. Um, <laughs> I predict that B Butterfly uh, FS will become the default file system in at least one distro. Did Sousa. it? Did it? Yes. Really? I th- I, mm, the one that I was watching <laughs> well, was Sousa, well, Fedora, they, but um, they, it hasn't. They've said they think it's ready for prime time. It hasn't actually shipped. Okay, yet. so that's a maybe no. we can say that that's next no. year then. I mean, it's a half, really, but it's, yeah. a, no. it's, a, no. it's a no. Okay, and I said Ubuntu One will start a video streaming service. Mm. I don't think we've done that. No, it's there's video stuff in the works and sort of you can get videos through the dashboard now through Amazon. No. Still no. <laughs> uh, okay, go on then. But interestingly, the year before in 2011, I said that cloud-powered laptop OSs would fail to take off and I was right, but that's changed this year with Chrome OS being laptops being widely available and desirable. They do look rather nice. Yeah. 
and people are buying them you know they seem to be buying quite a lot of them mm -hmm. so and they're available in like you know your average computer shop similarly so that was a one that was right that is now wrong okay you've got to do da -da. yeah uh, and yeah. mark in 2011 said uh, a mainstream major app like photoshop would be available in ubuntu software center which wasn't true at the end of 2011 but now we have steam and lots of games which mark also alluded to when he said it. Uh, uh, photoshop still notably not available oh, well. <laughs> and uh, yeah okay to be fair to Alan, i have just gone onto their website if you click on laptops and you go down to the xps section it under the xps 13 it does include a link to the ubuntu version so I, yeah, it's fine. Oh, maybe I was a bit too harsh. <laughs> okay. So we've got some predictions for 2013 mm, or yes. 2013. 2013, which, given our performance in the last year, are probably not worth listening to. <laughs> <laughs> so give it a just go. Skip on the next ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alan. I okay. So I predict there will be an Ubuntu phone available to buy in shops in at least one large Western country. Hmm. This year, sometime. Are you using insider knowledge, knowledge to make yeah. this prediction? No. <laughs> I think this is no. unfair. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Just keep saying no. No. We'll, well believe you. We shall see. Okay. Well, yeah, we will see. Um, but but I, I, said, I specifically said one large, one Western, large country. Western country. So, Meaning not India or China or somewhere, you know, really tiny and insignificant. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I've got to try and think of a country. You're not, saying, you're not, saying, that China, you're not saying that China or India are tiny and insignificant. No, I said China or India or somewhere insignificant. Okay. Yes. Get out of that one. Uh, I uh, then predict after the work done to get Ubuntu on the Nexus 7, 1304 will be released and will be measurably and anecdotally faster, more stable and more power efficient than previous releases. No new features okay. will land after feature freeze in 1304 and 1310. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely confident about that one. <laughs> um, but hopefully it will matter less because the new testing stuff that's being done mm -hmm. will make everything true. more stable before yes. it lands. And finally, the number of Linux games on Steam will increase from 1.8% of the total to 20% by the mm. end of 2013. So for reference, there are 1,814 Windows games in Steam, 336 OS 10 games and 34 Linux games. So 18% OS 10, 1.8%. So you're saying there'll be a just shy ten of 400 ten Linux times. games? Yes. Wow. Mm. Well, the number overall will go up as well oh, by yeah. the end of next year. The total number will go up, but Linux yeah. will jump by quite uh, a lot quite a lot yes how confident are you about that then i'm pretty confident i think that one is definitely that's a that's a no-brainer by the end mm. of next year there'll be loads of games in steam well you heard it here first folks okay what about you then tony well i have three massive predictions to make the first is that adobe will make creative suite <laughs> or just photoshop maybe uh are able to run on linux and uh, use that. Ah, <laughs> i know i notice i notice your very careful wording there yes. do you mean underwine Potentially, oh. because it already runs under Wine. Well, I run it on VMware oh, on yeah. Linux. Well, that doesn't yeah. count. That doesn't count. But sort of some sort of they will release something, right? Um, either as a as a extension toe in the water or type yeah, thing. a kind of toe in the water thing. So they'll either they'll bundle an official supported yeah. Wine version, or they will do something that will enable people to run another binary version, um, you know, natively. Mm -hmm. Some sort of toe in the water thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm not very confident about that, but that's. Uh, I predict will happen. <laughs> okay. Um, the thir uh, second one, sorry, you will have to watch a 30 second advert when you log into or unlock Ubuntu. Um, <laughs> or you pay a premium for an ad free version of wow. Ubuntu. Or download a, a, a version where someone took that out before they compiled it. Yeah. That's dialing the evil right up, that is. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, Canonical are essentially now an advertising company. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> right. You know, and the next Google. It is a logical evolution of you know, where we're right. going to go next. Okay. And you, can't, you, you won't be able to skip it either, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go okay. on. Your okay. next one. <laughs> <laughs> Give that one the, yeah. the credence it deserves. Yeah, go on. It deserves credence. Uh, and the third one is that Nokia will ditch Windows or go bust. Mm. By go bust, I potentially also mean, you know, get swallowed up by some yeah. company who just take all the IP and troll around with it. And specifically, get swallowed up by some other company. What if that other company is Microsoft? Does that count? No, because I don't think... have got small um, print now. Yeah. I can't God. really go into this much I just, depth. Well, after uh, Mark wasn't specific enough. I, I think <laughs> too specific. I was too specific. I, yeah, I, don't, don't, don't fall into this trap, Tony. Yeah, just be vague. Don't let him, don't let him lead you. <laughs> He's <laughs> tricking you. 
It's fine. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't think Microsoft would buy Nokia. Okay, good. So Microsoft won't buy Nokia. Nokia will ditch Windows, or they'll go completely bust. Yeah. Or both. Okay, just to be clear. So yeah. when or I listen get, back later, right, yes. that's what it will be. Okay, right, yes. In a year's time. Sounds good. Laura. Dell will stop shipping Windows pre-installed at all in favour of Ubuntu and selected other Linux distributions. I thought you were going to say in favour of OS2 for a minute. No, Ubuntu. Huh? Of course. Well, yes. that's certainly very optimistic. And selected other Linux distributions. Mm. It's a bit the vagueness turned up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John or Bacon will get an iPhone and will start writing music apps for it. Um, right. I could see could happen. that coming. Yes. Is, this, is this Jakosha for iOS? Yeah, I Jakosha. I Jakosha. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, that, it won't just be music apps. There'll be a John O'Bacon app, won't there? Yeah. In the uh, I- yes. iTunes store, and there'll just well, be it, one, is it one button, and when you press it, it says community. community. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> John Bacon soundboard. <laughs> Please, somebody make that happen. Well, we know someone who now has an iPhone who can write apps. That's yeah. totally going to happen. Uh, and Mark Shuttleworth will appear on Dancing on Ice in a bid to get mainstream recognition for Ubuntu on tablet slash mobile phone slash TV slash microwave slash fridge. Yes. I would love to see this. Yeah, that I want to see that as well. Quite amazing. Yeah. I don't know if he can skate, but that, that doesn't, doesn't stop most of the others. No, that's there. true. That would be awesome. I'd like to see him in a spray tan and lycra. Okay, that's no, what they do noted. on the show. I, I wasn't just specifically. Okay, that was a that. personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to add that to your list of predictions for next year? <laughs> no, <laughs> a little wish. Okay, Mark, go for it. Okay, I think that the Amazon search will be removed from the Dash Home Lens by default, although it will still be available as its own lens or as an opt-in option. And that RMS still won't be happy. Well, right. That, that, well, that's an easy one. RMS, you can <laughs> put RMS happy. still won't be happy as a separate prediction, and that will always be true. <laughs> uh, I uh, think that Windows 8 will fail to get much traction, and the remaining people mm. who are currently hanging on to XP will upgrade to 7 and stay there. I think that's a good call. Well, I'm not sure yeah, the people who are currently on XP can get 7, uh, unless they're mm. a corporate, but I think it's a good call. I think no, sorry, of, that's, that's the kind of people I was thinking. Right. Of. I think lots of people will skip 8. I think, yeah, I I think actually, Microsoft will make it harder, because they've realised they learnt from the fact that everyone stayed on XP. Mm. I think they've learned from that and they will make it really hard for you to, to go to Windows 7 and not 8. You can actually bet both ways on this because corporates will go to 7 yeah. and non-corporates won't be allowed to do anything but 8. Or maybe they'll go to Ubuntu instead. That's not part of my prediction. <laughs> I'm um, not, I am not predicting hedging. the success of Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> on the Ubuntu podcast, yes. And I also predict that a triple A game title, one triple A game title, will be released simultaneously on uh, cross-platform, including Linux, and that Linux will be Ubuntu 10.04. What do you mean by... 10.04? Tri- Sorry? No, 12.04. 12 I can't read my own writing. What do you mean by triple A? So, something like one of the really big titles that, you know, gets, like, um, a lot of... Like, yeah, budget. huge marketing, TV adverts, something like, you know, something you all have heard of, Tony. Duke Nukem. <laughs> There it is. We also had some predictions from the community. Uh, should we just go around, Robin, and pick a few out? Why not? Yeah. So one on. anonymous person contacted me on IRC, so I know exactly who they are. They're not anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his prediction, or her prediction, will be <laughs> Canonical will fold in 2013. Oh. Interesting. Carry on. Mm, let's hope not, mm. for Alan's sake. Um, Tommy Brunn via Google Plus, said that Steambox is released and has moderate success. We'll see a lot more not-quite AAA games released for Linux, mostly thanks to the Unity engine and Steam being being available. There still won't be a Linux-powered tablet, apart from Android, to rival those currently in the market. Same goes for smartphones, again, not counting Android. Uh, He seems to be dismissing Android quite well, heavily. Just so that people don't think when he says Linux powered, right. it, they don't think he he's doing that. that small print thing again. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Canonical rec- continue to receive flack whenever they do anything. Yeah, I yeah. think that's going to happen. That's a good yeah. one. That's, yeah. Fair. that's a good call. Uh, there will be a few competitive offers f- for specific types of laptops with Linux pre installed, but overall, you'll either still have to settle with middling specs or pay a bit extra. Those are my predictions. I hope I'm wrong. Except for the <laughs> Apart from the first one. Mm. Yeah, interesting selection. Again, the games thing seems to be quite big. Mm. Mm. Although, yeah, he doesn't think that there'll be a AAA title. He just thinks the... Little indie games, yeah. the Humble Bundle styles, right. the smaller games. So he directly disagrees with you then, Mark. Yeah. Yes. We shall see who's right. It's a smackdown. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's in Sweden. It's all right. At least two people, CM Ressington on Twitter and Ed Bradshaw, <laughs> uh, predict that 2013 will be the year of the Linux on the desktop. Moving on. <laughs> John, the nice guy, Spriggs, predicts that Og Camp will occur, featuring a live show where there is a person running around with a microphone. Depending on where and when it is, he might even volunteer to be that runner. Ooh. It could happen. Could, could happen. do. Could do. Paul Tansom, via Google+, Plus predicts a big announcement from Canonical Ooh. in January. Does Paul Tansom work for Canonical? Very specific. No. He now works for Alan and Alan at ah. the uh, ah. Libertus. Are they making him change his name? Yes. The Sorry? chicken company. Are they making him change his name? <laughs> to Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had a strange you dream. You don't have to be called Alan to know. work here. <laughs> was, it, <laughs> was it Mark? Spray tan. Spray tan. It was Alan Bell as an assassin killing chickens because <gasps> he has chickens i know wow he had like a he's like james bond <laughs> anyway james bond never killed chickens well you know james bond had killed chickens and looked like alan bell um okay uh any more predictions um uh, kim rasmussen predicted that uh, alan pope will be run, running up lots of stairs at the next og camp which you know seems likely yeah yeah if we have anything to do with it mm. there we go any more i think that's it okay those are our predictions. Thank Cheating. you very much for sending yours in, yes. community people. Come back next year to find out if we're right. And if you're right. Assuming there's a show. <laughs> it's time for the news. Version 1.0 of SparkleShare, an open source folder synchronization tool based on the Git version control system, has been released. After three years of development, all known major bugs have been fixed and the system should be ready for day to day usage. That's good news. Yes, it is. Basically, mm. an alternative to Dropbox. Yes, yes. Or, yes. Ubuntu 1. All of those kind of oh, file yes. storage things. Own Cloud. No, not Own Cloud. Yeah, bits Own Cloud of, can bits do of it. Own Cloud, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because it's based on Git, it's if you're working on, uh, like, if you're doing a development project with someone it's quite handy because it means that you can edit a bit of a file and save it and it'll sync to their version of it and oh, they can nice. like cool. be running the same code as you mm. but you could also use it for other files as well well have a play with that over christmas on my uh, home server actually mm. Mm, cool let us know how it goes mm. uh, f- following on from our news item about uh, crowdfunding in the last episode an indiegogo fundraiser has been launched for software wars an independent film about the software industry and the rise of free and open source software the current trailer for the film features interviews with linus torvalds and the internet's jono bacon the project is seeking one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of funding to complete the film Wow. That's How much have they got so far? 2,000. Yes. And that's John O'Bacon as seen in Don't Listen Alone. Mm. Yeah. In fact, I, I did a documentary featuring John O'Bacon <laughs> for no money at all. <laughs> <laughs> Fool. Um, I had a look at the, uh, at the Indiegogo and actually some of the clips date back to like June last year. So it looks like some of the, some of the clips were made mm. and you know, they've been sitting around and I think... They basically want the money to finish it. Mm. I think is the is the requirement. Good luck. Ooh. Andrew Bunny Huang has posted details of an open top, open top, open <laughs> laptop design. The current design features a micro SD interface for storing boot firmware, a Raspberry Pi compatible inter- uh, input output interface, and a separate board dedicated to power management to maximise the design's flexibility alongside the standard laptop fare. The project was started in June, and the current prototype motherboards are reported to boot Linux successfully. And these are ARM based, aren't they? I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it looks uh, looks quite cool. He's got a history of building uh, wacky, interesting hardware devices, so it's good good take off. Mm. Mm. Keep an eye on it. The Raspberry Pi Foundation, in collaboration with Indie City and Velocix, have launched the Pi Store, an app store to distribute software that runs on the low-cost computer. The client for the store is included in the official system image or can be installed through apt on unofficial builds and include some ex- some titles exclusive to the Pi. Do you know what's annoying about this? We we mentioned a little while ago that Indie City were making a Linux version of their store so that yeah. on a Linux desktop you could install software from their store. Mm. And they appear to have made one, but for the Raspberry Pi and not for general Linux desktops. So what would happen if you installed it on... Oh, oh, arm, isn't it? oh yeah. Oh, well, maybe this is just their first sort of specific yeah. experiment. Maybe that was the client that mm. they talked about. Oh, yeah. yeah. We shall see. Yes. 
Users of the XDA Developers Forum have uncovered a vulnerability in some sang- sam- hum- Samsung devices. <laughs> Wow. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> How much brandy butter have you had? I think it was the mulled wine. <laughs> uh, in some Samsung devices running Android, allowing malicious software to gain root access without seeking permission, potentially giving it complete control of the device. That's quite yeah. scary. Mm. That's fine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it seems like there's a bit of a brouhaha, people pointing the finger at Samsung for being daft and you know, that whoever developed this was uh, was just not thinking straight and uh, so is it a modification that Samsung have made to Android that's yes. introduced to vulnerability something to do with yeah. the, the, the kernel. it's the way it maps memory you oh. know the slash dev slash mem thing oh the, yeah the way Linux that. gets to memory well they've they've kind of forked that and changed that a bit and in the way that they forked it they've made it so that everything has full permission over the whole of the memory of the well, device through that device mm. all your phone are belong to us <laughs> to Samsung <laughs> to Samsung yes. oh is that the implication that they well no anyway I mean it means that the devices are easily rootable but it means that a malicious app could just stomp all over your RAM or mm. get information from other apps running like you know the browser that you were using to log on to your bank or you mm. know your password store app or you know any, any one of a number of things Not good? No. But that's the end of the news. Hello, I'm the famous television historian Fergus Campbell Finlay Fraser MacDonald McGregor from the popular archaeology show Where Did You Dig That Up? And this is an extract from my forthcoming documentary about the radio show Tomorrow's Technology Today. Many people regard Tomorrow's Technology Today as an insignificant blip in British broadcasting history, but I don't. So I called my good friend, Stuart Farquhar, to agree with me. Oh yes, Tomorrow's Technology Today was a very significant programme in the early days of British broadcasting. Key to the success of the show was the chemistry, or lack of it, between the co-hosts, the dilettante, and some say congenitally stupid, Douglas Austin Cambridge, and the highly intellectual physics graduate, Deirdre Morris Oxford. Dreadful man, utterly appalling, a drunk philanderer, sexual predator, totally ignorant of anything scientific, and utterly contemptuous of anything remotely resembling effect. He was a ked. I dare say he was overqualified for broadcasting. What also made tomorrow's technology today remarkable was the use of vox pop recordings of the public. Chimney sweep George Lampson was interviewed for one of the early episodes. Yes, sir. They asked me what I thought of all sorts of newfangled inventions. Why did they choose you? They wanted the opinions of the average man in the street. What did you tell them? That I didn't have any. And that brought your involvement with the show to an abrupt end? No. My involvement with the show came to an abrupt end when I was run over by the motor car of the Home Secretary. I told them standing in the middle of the street was a crap idea. The programme was halted abruptly by the outbreak of World War II when the War Office decided many military technical developments might be leaked over the airwaves. Just what are you researching? By enclosing fissionable heavy elements in a combustible sphere to produce a chain reaction, we are attempting to construct a submolecular implosive explosive device. You mean an atomic bomb? That's a gross oversimplification. Yes. Douglas Austin Cambridge failed seven medicals and never served in the military. It's thought he spent the duration of the war in a basement nightclub in London, Soho. After the war, he received a doctorate for his contribution to science and served as Vice-Chancellor at Trinity College, Cambridge. Here he is being interviewed about the programme in 1978. Radio show? Oh yes. Marvellous. Jimmy Young, David Jacobs, Terry Wogan. Marvellous. Me? Oh no. I don't think so. Memory. Pin sharp, you see. You recorded a show years ago. Did I? Did I really? How splendid. 
What was it about? Deirdre Morris Oxford flew delivery flights of Spitfires and Hurricanes from the Vickers factory to RAF bases all over Britain, becoming the first female pilot to shoot down enemy aircraft. Two fighters, a bomber and the plane carrying American big band leader Glenn Miller. After the war, she served as scientific advisor to the first Labour government, but eventually defected to Soviet Russia during the Cold War, where she proceeded to terrify the life out of Nikita Khrushchev and the rest of the Politburo. Never mind the box, it's a theoretical model. Oh, it's a stuffed cat, I see. No, I don't. Why would you poison a stuffed cat? Ugh. Tomorrow's technology today ran from 1936 to 1939, but only a handful of episodes have survived thanks to the Herbert Maxwell Fosdyke Curmudgeon Memorial Archive. I don't see what a poisoned pussy has to do with teleportation, Deirdre. After all, if you want to send a cat somewhere, you send a boy round with it on a bicycle. If you'd like to hear the rest of this documentary, we'll be streaming it on demand for a very modest fee. All major credit cards accepted. You see, Deirdre, all this talk of stuffed cats, and now we've run out of time. Uh, that's all for tomorrow's technology today. Toodle pip and God save the king. Yes, Merry Christmas. Here's some meow meow now. Get lost. <laughs> dear, oh dear, the nerve of it. They only knew one verse. Didn't stop them singing it four times, though. I admire their stamina. Right, I can't put it off anymore. I've got to write the sketch for the Christmas episode. Let me see. Typewriter, tea, cake. All set. Now I know how the great writers feel when they sit down to create a new literary masterpiece. Agatha Christie and Jeffrey Archer, all the bigwigs. Right, here we go then. Eyes down for a full house. The Ubuntu UK podcast Christmas special. Now, what to write about? What's the plot going to be? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, that's good. That's very funny. <laughs> I can just see Alan doing that. <laughs> with the chicken. No, that's not going to work. It's not exactly family friendly or chicken friendly. Uh, I suppose I should start at the beginning. Dramatis Personae. Oh, of all the... Hiya! Oh, it's you. I'm trying to write the sketch for the Christmas episode. What do you want? That's a cheek. I'm the only reason people listen to that squally little podcast. You might think it's all about the content, but we both know that those geeks just want to hear my hot British accent. One email. We had one email and you haven't stopped going on about it since. I'll have you know I'm very much in demand. Other podcasts have been in touch. Apparently they need a new host on Linux Outlaws now that Fab has become all reasonable. Fab? Reasonable? <laughs> now look, you better make sure that this sketch has a good part in it for me. I don't just want to be some token girl shoved in there to make you boys look more inclusive, you know. Um, okay. Anything particular in mind? I want to do a song. Uh, any particular song? Or shall I just pick something from the extensive back catalogue of public domain or Creative Commons licensed popular hits? I have a little something in mind. Something I've been working on. 
a 15-verse arrhythmic biography of Simone de Beauvoir with a backing track played entirely on recycled milk cartons. Oh, yes, that'll get him tuning in. Anything else, perhaps? Your own dressing room uh, filled with white roses and blue M&Ms and a view of the Sahara with herds of pangolins sweeping precisely across it? Ah, sarcasm's very unbecoming, you know. Just make sure I'm the star, not those other two. Remember, it's not for my benefit. We're only giving the public what they want. Yes, OK, whatever you say. Now, if, if you don't mind, you're disturbing me. It's not easy creating a work of literature, you know. Creating literature? You? You can barely spell your own name. The most creative thing you've ever written is a note to the milkman. I don't have to stand here and be harassed in my own house. Of course not. You can sit down if you like. Hmm, there's a nasty draught in here. I need to keep my voice in good shape. I'd better go and find somewhere warmer. Right, where was I? Ah, yes. Dramatis Personae. Knock, knock! Oh, for the love of... Fret not, Alan is here, with a spring in his step and a bulging sack of technological goodies. Do you know, Alan has had the most amazing idea for the Christmas episode. We should have a sketch, something funny. What are you up to? I'm trying to write a sketch for the Christmas episode. Ah. Only every time I sit down to start it, some great airy mush comes through the door. Oh, that must be awful for you. Never mind, at least Alan's here now. Let's see what you've got so far. Dramat. Hmm. Dramat. Dramate. I don't think much of it so far. Not exactly J.K. Rowling, are you? Still, I can't say I'm surprised. The last time you wrote the podcast Christmas sketch, we got two emails in response. One writing to complain about the accents, and the other asking for their money back. And you were supposed to finish this weeks ago. I know, it's just, well... You've been hanging around with your Doctor Who podcast mates, haven't you? Well, what if I have been? We never said this was exclusive. Well, it's just that I thought we had something special. (sighs) Nah. Now listen... Alan's had another totally different, amazing idea for the Christmas play. It should be a romance. It should start with a rugged, handsome hero saving a damsel in distress. As he strides across the wastelands of Hampshire, he sees the woman who loves him waiting, sitting on a rock, pining, just next to the A34. Oh, yes. Oh, very good. Yes, I I can see it now. She sees him, rushes towards him, her arms outstretched. He takes her in his arms and she swoons. Don't worry, my darling. I'm here now. Of Of course, course, I'll I'll play play the the hero. hero. You? Why not me? Well, I mean, no offence, but you're not exactly the Clark Gable type, are you? I can't see you running across a moor in a frilly shirt. Anyway, I'm not sure anyone would buy it. It's not really plausible. You can't move for damsels in distress around here, leaning out of their castles, swishing their hair all over the place. You great fool. Anyway, Alan's got to nip to the post office. These competition prizes aren't going to post themselves, you know. TTFN! (sighs) Okay, let's start again. Dramatis Personae. Dram blinking atis per blooming sone. Right, that's it. I've had enough. Right, I don't care what you're selling, you can take it and shove it right up your... Good evening, Mr Whitmore. <sighs> not for you, it's not, Mark. Trick or treat was six weeks ago. Sorry, Mr Whitmore, I only called round to see how you're getting on with the Christmas sketch. I'd be getting on a darn sight better if you just leave me alone. Stop picking on me. I've driven a long way to come and see you. You'll never guess how far. What do I care how far you've driven? You'll never guess. Go on, have a guess. <sighs> I don't know, 20 miles. More? What, more than 20? 50? More. hundred? No, don't be silly. I'm not made of money, you know. Oh, well, I'm 75. No, nowhere near. Look, I haven't got time to be standing around here with you chatting numbers. Are you going to tell me how far you drove or not? 65.8 miles. How am I supposed to guess at 65.8 miles, you great lump? Oh, aren't you a grumpy groundhog this evening? Well, how would you feel if every time you tried to get on with a bit of work, some hobbledehoy stuck his beak in... You don't know how fragile the creative process is. That's a bit rich coming from you. You're no Stephen Moffat yourself, are you? The most sophisticated thing you ever wrote started, There once was a man from Nantucket. If you're not going to say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Here, have a mince pie, fill your cake hole up for a few minutes. No, keep them away. I don't like them, they're all icky. I don't like mince meat. Don't make me eat it or I'll tell mum. Wait, oh look, it started snowing. I'm going to go and write Moodle in the snow. Right. Dramatis Personae. I'll never get this done.
It's getting late. I'll just have a quick nap. 40 winks and I'll get right back on it. Yeah, right back on it. Right back. Wake up, Tony. Huh? What the f- Shh. Come with me. Sure, a, a very pale guy with a carrot for a nose, coal for eyes, my granddad's old scarf round his neck, and very cold fingers appears in my house and asks me to come with him. Why wouldn't I? Come on. Oh, might as well. Take my hand, we're going to fly. I'm not Mark Shuttleworth. I can't just close my eyes, wish for a plane, and one appears. No, have faith in me. Take my hand and run! Anything else I should do? Flap my arms, perhaps? Or or put my underpants over my tights? You're wearing tights? Shush. So anyway, this flying thing... Just run! Come on, faster! Faster! I don't believe it. I'm I'm flying. I am actually flying. This is brilliant. Keep holding my hand. Let's go. How long are we going to be flying? It's not exactly warm up here. Look below you. That's amazing. A whole new landscape. I, I don't recognise it at all. It looks strange, though. There's, there's something distinctly odd about it. Let's land. Look over there. It's a pig. But why is it all blocky? We're in the land of Minecraftia. Never heard of it. It's a magical land where people with too much time on their hands and social problems can make low-resolution buildings and populate them with low-resolution animals and zombies. Well, this pig certainly seems to be friendly. Ah, hello there. Welcome to Minecraft here. A talking pig? <laughs> hey, to be sure. It's grand to see you. Will you be stopping long? Uh, um, maybe. Don't speak too soon. Look out! <laughs> Are they zombies? Yep. Seriously, zombies. Oh god, they've got hold of the pig. <laughs> Look out, they're coming for us now. When I say run, run! But they're all around us, there's nowhere to run to. No, true. It's just that I've always wanted to say that. Here they come. Oh, my God, this is it. We are definitely going to die. Kiss me, Snowy. You do choose your moment, don't you? Wait, it's all gone dark. Where did they go? Java Seg faulted. Suppose we better get you home. Right, it's done. There it is. The Ubuntu UK podcast Christmas sketch. Let Alan look. Oh dear, my part is rather small. What's this weird bit in the middle where you go off with a snowman? You know that bit in Life of Brian where he goes into the spaceship and it's all a bit weird and slightly out of place and doesn't really drive the narrative on at all and just seems to be there to fill time? Yes, why? No reason. Sorry, this is just not good enough. It won't stretch me at all. Alan's got much more to give. And you've left my song out. I've been practising it weeks and stealing milk cans for months. 
Right, I've had enough of you lot and your demands. Maybe I'll just walk out and leave you to it. No, don't do that. You know what happened last time? Remember the emails we got? The passive-aggressive emails. Some of them weren't that passive. We can't cause that many people to be mildly discomforted again. Look, it's either this, or we do a quiz with the Linux Outlaws. We'll do your sketch. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Brilliant idea. Let's do it. That's better. We so rarely get a chance to celebrate, but this time we must. It is Christmas. Looky here, Alan's got some champagne. Here's a toast. A happy Christmas to us all. And incidentally, a happy Christmas to all of you at home. Now it's time for a Christmas bit about Ubuntu. How is it a Christmas bit about Ubuntu? Uh, because it's the last one before Christmas. Uh, okay. We can put some tinsel and holly on it if you like. Oh, go on. <laughs> uh, Launchpad users can now request builds of their software for ARM devices. This is good. Mm, Previously, yeah. it was re- um, reserved, uh, the ARM builders were reserved for uh, canonical people uh, building private projects and stuff like that but uh, now it's all uh, available for community under cool. certain limitations and the mm. limitations are there because we've got a limited amount of arm hardware to build mm. on so um, so the limitations are you have to your build takes less than four hours to build yep. and less than 10 builds a week i think that should be fewer <laughs> oh for yeah goodness i sake. didn't write that yeah no it's a wiki though tony you could edit it and fix it okay i'll just do that now <laughs> <laughs> expected to be done by the end of the show okay Uh, Ubuntu One users can now view all photos in their account as an online gallery through the updated Ubuntu One web interface. What do you think of this, Tony, resident photo-liking person? Are any of your photos on Ubuntu One? Uh, Yes. Ah. Um, I had a quick look at the photo interface just before this show, actually, and it's quite nice. It's not a million miles away from the Dropbox equivalent, sort of an online gallery. It just sorts through your photos based on which folder they're in within your Ubuntu One folder. Um, And there's a a slideshow feature as well, although that was a bit slow loading big images because it downloads the image then it shows it um but actually once it had been around the album or the collection once it was uh, it was quicker the second time how around. does it know what a photo is I, I know that sounds like a stupid question i don't know um, does, it, does it only do certain folders called photos or something no, like that? It, just, I guess it, it looks, looks at the more type thing. of all of the files in your account so you screenshots count as photos and oh, yeah. we thought so yes right isn't that okay. a bit scary well, potentially, I guess, depending on what you're storing. Why? Well, you could just put any old photos in there. You don't necessarily want them on galleries. No, they're not no, public. They're not oh, public. right. You just view yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yes, no, it's nice. It's a nice interface. Can you make them public? You can share the hmm. files using Ubuntu One. Yes. Okay, then. Cool. I don't know if you can make the actual galleries public, if that's right. what you're Yeah, asking. sorry, that's what I was, I was, I was alluding to. Oh, God. Scared the living daylight out of me. <laughs> oh, well, was that an amusing party popper, was it? That, that, that makes oh, it Christmas. so much more Christmassy now. <laughs> it's a Christmas bit of now that, that my heart has stopped. <laughs> Thanks God. for the warning, Laura. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have been a Christmas surprise, would it? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have waited till the end. Wow. I've got more. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, good. Well, look out for those. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn, Tony. Daniel Holbach, Community develop- Development Liaison, has created a PPA for installing the Ubuntu Advocacy Development Kit. Whew, lots of long words in that. A package of materials for loco teams and other enthusiasts looking to promote Ubuntu. That's rather cool. Mm. Yeah. So what's in this kit? That's an excellent question. I have no idea. Okay. What's in it? Why don't you install it on your laptop and find out? Yes. It, it's, um, John has done a blog post about it. <laughs> 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 it's, I, I don't know where he was when he did it. Kind. Um, it's an ebook and there's a PDF version um, and it's guide, guidance about oh, so it's advocating. It's documentation Ubuntu. that you can have on your local machine. Yes. Mm. And I guess by having it in a PPA, if the... Uh, documentation is updated in a central thing. You get a notification that there's an update available for Awesome. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Elizabeth Crumbach has blogged about restarting the Ubuntu Learning Project. 
Yes, it's been um, it's been kind of on the back burner for a while, but mm. um, she's kicking it off again, um, and uh, hopefully get a few people involved in order to create some le- learning materials based around Ubuntu. Yeah, so there's a link. I guess we'll put that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Yep, where you can find out more if you want to get involved. Yeah, um, and it, and it's it's. Um, it's not that they're writing documentation. Um, but I think there's a, a mistake that that um, people think they're uh, they're just rewriting all the documentation. They're writing specifically very um, targeted training material, and they've got some guidelines for creating uh, well targeted training material. Which right, so it's training on using Ubuntu, not yeah. learning materials in general. Made exactly, using Ubuntu, right, and they've yeah. got all kinds of stuff like no. lesson plans, learning objectives, and all that kind of stuff that okay. needs to be that, that goes along with it, rather than just a document that says here's how you install software. Sort of or, stuff you could use for a certification program. Or yeah, something that kind like of that. thing. Yeah. Hmm. So it's, is good. it necessarily targeted at young people uh, i don't know actually i don't th- i don't think so okay um but um i would need to know more by reading the blog post and <laughs> i suggest you do that too yeah. uh, well touche <laughs> and everyone's favorite grandfather of free software richard storman has set the linux community alight with debate over accusations that ubuntu now distributes spyware in the form of its amazon shopping search so what's uh, what's canonical up to mm. the evil evil people sort themselves out? Yeah, he's a bit late to the party with this yeah. one, isn't he? he um, yeah, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's it's caused a bit of a ruckus, and there's been lots of people saying lots of things, and I think there's plenty of links that you can read yourself mm. and yes. form your own opinion. He does say one particularly ridiculous thing that it's a problem because it's on by default, but even if it's off by default, that wouldn't be good enough. You should ask people every time they do a search, which just goes to show that he doesn't really know much about computer usability. Yeah, it's it's kind of frustrating, especially when uh, you know his the the conclusion is that we should shun you know Ubuntu <laughs> and we should um, never advocate the use of it at Linux user groups and and that kind of stuff. And mm. that's kind of frustrating, um, really, to be honest. But was it was it RMS approved in the first place? I didn't. I thought that he was already very critical of it and yeah. wouldn't advise people to use it. I don't think. I don't think he's ever publicly said anything like this before about about the shopping lens. Um, I think the EFF gave a position statement, mm. an evaluation of it, and the FSF have as well, but not RMS specifically. But mm. now he has. I think it's um, it's kind of upped the game a little bit. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> And there was a couple of blog posts with Jono back and forth, and a yeah, bit of and then there've been posturing and uh, recanting, and yeah, and lots of uh, journalists have written articles, and uh, there's a lot of comment. It's yet another one of those lengthy discussion things that happen online when we do something. Um, I, 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 I forgotten by next year. It's it's somewhat depressing, really, given you know his position in the free software movement to mm. say shunning Canonical and Ubuntu and. Uh, yeah, well, we'll have to see how it pans out. Uh, future versions of Linux will no longer support the i386 architecture. The I remember when all this was punch cards processor architecture, <laughs> and the uh, uh, kernel, sorry, the processor for which Linux was first developed. Oh yes, the 386. Oh yeah. Oh, Late, yeah. Later iterations of the x86 architecture will be supported. So 486 SX and onwards, I believe, because mm. uh, they still make those. Yeah, they're used in embedded Bizarrely. embedded machines, aren't oh, they? Oh really? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the um, the AMD geode is a 486-ish thing as well, the thing that was in the Viglin. Yes. Yeah. The MCCL. Yeah. Right, which hasn't been available for No, a uh, while. but, you know, in embedded uh, arenas, that, that kind of low-power, small um, mm. x86-compatible thing is still quite popular. Mm. Linux, uh, Linus said he was not very sentimental about pulling the support for it <laughs> and it enables actually some changes and things to be made that have been uh, not possible because of the continuing support for 386 so right cool it's not just clearing stuff away it's actually going to help make things easier in the future good cool and that's the end of the bit about and not about ubuntu for this year <laughs> Now it's time for the feedback, Ooh. brought to you by Alan Pope, <laughs> <laughs> who had his eyes shut. Uh, we've had a nice voicemail left for us. Yeah, hi, it's Phil Thompson from Peterborough. Just um, trying out this strange app on my uh, Android device that has a kind of phone handset as the iPhone, and I thought I'd test it and just say hello to you guys, and thank you very much for the podcast. 
I really enjoy the content and the quality is good. And sometimes I listen to it in the car and sometimes on the bike or out walking and occasionally in the bath. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I, I like the fact that he was testing an app and decided to phone us and not, you know, someone more important in his just life. See, it wasn't just lovely. me who didn't get that. The phone shaped app the dialer. Oh, yeah. I, see. yeah. I didn't get that either. Oh, okay. I feel dumb now. <laughs> <laughs> Only as dumb as me. Well, well, oh, that's all right. If you listen to the podcast in the bath, why not email in? And <laughs> but no, no pictures, no bath. pictures. We can do <laughs> Alan's deep bath feature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had another nice voicemail, but I think the caller kept turning away from the phone uh, because after the first few words in each sentence, it wasn't possible to hear what they said. So um, please speak clearly into the phone. Enunciate your vowel. <laughs> Hi there, um, just calling from the old man, really enjoy the podcast, um, I'm an Ubuntu list, um, been, been once for many years. Um, I just listened to the podcast now, uh, I'm not sure what number it is, uh, season 5, episode 21. Um, it's going really well, um, really enjoy the uh, crowdfunding um, kind of spiel. I could hear us in the background. Yes. That was somewhat weird. It's kind of like a live director's commentary. He was <laughs> listening to the episode. Excellent. Telling yes. us what he this thought of it. This is the bit where Alan says, yeah. here's the news. And it did actually come out better than we thought. Yeah. I did a little bit of very, processing magic very, yeah. on it. Thank you very much for your feedback. It's yes. very, it's very nice to get that. Feedback from the Isle of Man. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Who knew they had phones over there? <laughs> uh, why am I doing all of these? Um, <laughs> Bill Baker emailed to say... Part of community is, to my mind, the need and ability to pass on thanks and praise. This weekend, I had a major fail. Fortunately, I was on IRC at the time. I didn't time the response, but wow! On Ubuntu UK IRC channel, the problem was easily resolved by two members, and they only took seconds to do so. I think one of the responders was some bloke with a coded IRC nick, Popey, or something like that. The other was Penguin42. May I take this time to say a big thank you? Drinks owed somewhere, I think, or tea and cake, if preferred. Oh, yes. That's nice. That's, yeah, we do get a fair number of, like, random questions in the Ubuntu UK IRC channel. It's not officially a support channel. Yeah, the official support channel is Hash Ubuntu. But um, good luck if you but, want to <laughs> try and get a word but, in there. You know, we, we generally don't kick people out if, they want, if they've got a support question. So, um, yeah, it's quite That's nice. That's where I always to, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bill. Stephen Kellett emailed us about our discussion last episode when someone from UTC plus 13 time zone contacted us about getting Ubuntu support and we guessed him to be from Hawaii. Big mistake. Well, I didn't actually guess that. I'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> so apparently Hawaii and Alaska are US states and are not in UTC 13. I think they're 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. uh, since the international dateline jags a little, the three possible island nations that your correspondent could have hailed from include Tokolo, the independent state of Samoa and K Kabati. And a big part of why it's hard to find help in the Pacific region is that the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, which is a regional intergovernmental body that works on technical matters, um, they push very, very hard for standardisation across the Pacific uh, in computing along the traditional Windows alignment. It was considered bizarre and otherworldly when I showed up with my <laughs> MacBook in late 2006 in America's, American Samoa. Mac OS is virtually unknown outside major Commonwealth realms like Australia and New Zealand. As for Linux on the desktop, there are probably rare fish out there that are more easily <laughs> spotted. Uh, so Hawaii is about 3,000 miles away from all three islands, so help from them is a non-starter. Uh, in terms of regional travel, the closest hubs would be Nadi in Fiji and Sydney in Australia. Communication links out there are very messy and broadband broadband links are quite poor if at all well so what what i what i actually said <laughs> was that i looked at where in the world were utc plus 13 and looked at what places might be sort of on irc at the same sort of time of day i didn't uh, actually think that alaska and why were utc 13 just to thank you very much for the yeah. uh for yeah, the geography that's actually, yeah. there. well i thought it was going to be the but, copy and paste of a wikipedia article um to start with but actually there's a good point about yes. yeah. isolated yeah. Yeah. Really communities quite interesting. yeah and how it can be supported or how they can be supported uh, effectively mm. or can they indeed and thanks to stephen sent a lot of emails and uh, messages in to us over this yeah. season so thank, thank you very much. Much. Yes, thank you and that is the end of your feedback <laughs> Thank you.
that's all for this episode and indeed this season of the Ubuntu UK podcast. So thank you for listening. You can find out how to get in touch with us on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org, where you can find our voicemail numbers and Twitter feed, Facebook and Google Plus pages and our IRC channel. Let us know what you think of the show and give us your thoughts about Ubuntu and the community that makes it. <laughs> Join us when and if, it says here, we come back next year. Ooh, yes. There we go. Yes. We haven't had the curry yet, so... Yeah, we're, we only yeah. decide when we have a curry yeah. whether we're going to do this yes. again. Oh, and don't. I've got to move house before we do that. Yeah. That's true. And we don't have the curry till January, at least. So. I'm away for a week in January, so we're not having it then. <laughs> Make sure your friends this off air. <laughs> no, it's very important that they hear about this. <laughs> this vital part of our logistics. Well, before we wrap up this season, Laura, have you got any more loud explosions you wish to make? Oh yes, one second. Oh, hang on, oh. I've got Talk one. Talk on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> it seems like barely yesterday we were sitting down to start the beginning of this season, or even this episode. Oh, oh, hello. We've got one each. Don't throw things at me, Laura. Get in his eye. Just throw. It. Oh, I caught it. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone, fire oh, them at Tony. Love the smell of these things that oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh it's like a party in here <laughs> and everyone's invited right oh laura's using I up think, all I of think, the party poppers look the, the cats have uh, have run off we should have thought about this earlier in the season yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe we'll be it next year it's christmas well thank you very much indeed uh, laura mark alan it's been a pleasure speaking to you oh, thank you year. for having us Tony well, that's oh, yeah. not what I thanks meant thanks for the tea and cake <laughs> yeah it's been good fun I've enjoyed thanks for season. coming all this way yeah <laughs> 65.8 miles <laughs> <laughs> oh dear well I guess that's it really thank yeah. you very much everybody we'll see I can you. go now yes Alan's <laughs> off now <laughs> Alan's leaving Merry TTFN. Christmas bye bye